Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm losing it, man. I, I don't know what to do. Uh, Chalupa, what's going on here? Obama, I don't have any video ideas. I think I went through all the popular webtoons. Th th there's none left. Uh, Chalupa, don't you think you should, you know, look at your comments? Oh, right. I do ask for video ideas. Thanks, Obama. To the computer. But isn't there a computer here already? All right. I found one. I-I love you? Never heard of it, but how much likes does it have? Holy! Oh, this is the one! This is the one! Let's go! Alright, so I got nothing to say for this webtoon. I'm not gonna lie, I never even heard of it before you guys suggested it. But I at least want to know a gist of what this webtoon has to offer. So I'll watch one of the incredibly misleading trailers and see what it's all about. Alright, so there's this girl, she's a loner, society hates her, but, but what's this? Something strange happened? <gasps> oh no, she rejected her humanity, she couldn't take it anymore! Oh, 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 wait, she just met a guy. Gotta love romance webtoons. All right, anyways, you guys know the drill. 10 episodes, let's get into this. Future Chalupa here. No way I can do 10 episodes. These episodes are way too long. So I'm gonna narrow it down to seven episodes. I'm sorry, but my phone would die of a stroke if this video goes longer than 15 minutes. Also, I'm skipping the prologue. <laughs> We start off this webtoon with a girl in class describing her life as boring. All of a sudden, the teacher comes by handing out test results while flaming the entire class. The main character is confident that she passed because she studied like her life depended on it and she got a 68. Bro, either she did absolutely nothing while studying or her teacher failed everyone on purpose. She meets up with her friends, complaining about the results and she even contemplates being a <clears throat> entertainer. Her friends say, oh no, there's, they, they said her name, and there's no way I'm pronouncing that right. Let's just call her, um, uh, Shin, Th that's her forever name. Hey man, not cool, you should say her full name. Her friends are explaining every reason why she can't be a stripper, and Shin gets mad. One of her friends suggests that she should try and seek love and be a housewife. Shin, however, refuses that option, saying that she can't do that these days. What are you talking about, Shin? Of course you can do that these days. There are only two groups who will get angry at you, Andrew Tate wannabes and the Twitter community. I think you'll be way better off without listening to their opinions. After she gets back to class, Shin is wondering why college is so unbelievably difficult these days. She shoots down the housewife option, not because she hates love, but because she doesn't want to go through the divorce thing. And then she catches a guy looking at her and she's offended? Hey man, looking at people isn't illegal. You know what? I'm gonna go look at someone right now. Hey man, I'm gonna look at you and you can't do a thing about it. Uh oh. Shin rejects Blonde Man very nonchalantly, and then she's dragged away. Don't worry, Blonde Guy. We're making sure you're getting over her. Her friends are telling her that she shouldn't have rejected him, especially not in that manner. She's especially upset because he was... German? Wait a second, why does it matter if he's German specifically? The girls then start ordering their burgers, and while the two girls get some ordinary burgers, Shin gets the heart attack. The waiter is trying to coerce her into getting something else, but she wants that burger. Hey man, I, I take his advice if I were you, lest you want to become bedridden by the age of 25. They're talking about a company party or something, and they convince Shin to go with food. Bro, food cannot be the only excitement in her life. Or maybe I'm wrong and she's actually eating more because she's bulking and wants to get jacked. As it turns 
turns out blonde guy and his friends walk into the restaurant and Shin and her friends hide. Unfortunately for Shin, it's not going to be very easy for her to hide because one of his friends is just lighting her up, straight up violating her. She eventually loses it and throws her drink at him, but ends up hitting this guy instead. She apologizes to the guy and offers to clean his jacket. Hey, look at that, she apologized to him and is fixing her mistake? Well, maybe she's a nice girl after all and she's beating the crap out of his jacket. Her friends grab her and they leave before they can get their food. Man, those cooks in the back are gonna be devastated to know that their burger went to waste. After a long time, Orange Man finally turns around, and I, I guess that means he's supposed to be a significant character. <laughs> Shin, for some reason, is reading a forbidden comic about siblings loving each other. Her friends tell her to get ready, but Shin says she's been ready and she's going in what's comfortable. Hey man, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that sentiment. There are most definitely some occasions where you'd need to have proper attire. I can't believe he's gone. He was taken from us too soon. He'll be missed. Wish he was still with us. Yeah, it's such a tragedy what the hell are you wearing? After Shin finally wears a dress, they arrive at the party, and sure, Shin has an ugly mask, but they are there. Blue-haired girl tells Shin not to cause any trouble because these people are high society and their clothes are mad expensive. What do you mean, as long as you get your food, you'll be fine? Her friends try and convince her to dance, but there is no convincing this girl. Oh hey, I think those are their names. I just have no clue who is who. Let me take a guess. This one's Maya and this one's Rika. Oh my gosh, I was right! I'm borderline psychic! Yeah! Shin gets away from sexual harassers and finally finds the food. She goes ham on the food and gets anything she sees. However, just as she grabs a tiramisu, a guy trips her. Be grateful, Shin. That guy was probably saving you from a life of tubes up your nose. Shin is mad at the guy for tripping her and taking her tiramisu. The guy turns out to be a complete snob, saying her dress is poor and low quality. Now that's just a terrible mindset to have. You can wear a shirt that costs thousands of dollars and it'll still be worthless depending on what kind of person you are. I can wear a $10 shirt I found in Walmart and still make it work because it's the man that makes the shirt, not the other way around. Wait a second, this is a Chalupa video. We can't have real messages. Uh, he's in Mexico. Shin can't contain herself and throws mystery meat at the guy, not remembering that the clothes these people wear are just a little expensive. Shin runs away very quickly and immediately calls Rika, asking her if they can go home. Unfortunately for Shin, they encounter a very famous celebrity and hang up on Shin. Shin gets mad at the fact that Rika is ignoring her calls and this eavesdropping guy says he can give her a ride. Assuming the worst, Shin runs away. Shin tries calling Rika again, but she overhears them deciding to ignore her since she's ruining the the party for them. Sorry, what are they gonna pay for exactly? Sure, the guy who tripped you earlier was a jerk, but in the end, you caused this predicament and now they have to pay for not wanting to end their fun? Look man, I get she has a sad backstory and whatnot, and I'm sure her upbringing has a factor in the way she acts. It does not, however, mean I have to like her. Bro, do the main characters of these webtoons have to be so unlikable? Are these main characters just cursed to be the most annoying things in existence? Orange Man comes up to Shin to explain himself and Shin is already threatening to call the police. He tries to explain himself that he just wants to help her because he's bored of the party since it's all just politics and she didn't listen. Bro, would it kill you to do one likable thing right now? She tells him off for virtually no reason and storms off thinking he's gone for good, but fortunately he isn't. He says he's gonna help her by calling her a cab and this is what gets her attention, pranking her friends because they totally deserve it. You know, I, I really didn't want to, but you most definitely deserve this. Yo, I found a demon. She's got red eyes and she's in a park or something. All right, hope you tear her apart. <laughs> Shit! 
Jin is very excited about pranking her friends, even freaking out Orange Man. In the end though, they go through with doing the prank, which turns out to be a prank call. Or rather a prank voicemail, cause they're still ignoring her calls. He leaves a voicemail, pretending he's a creep trying to take her home after she's drunk too much, and Shin is very pleased. Until Orange Man says he's gonna do the sexy time, and she tries murdering him. The bartender says they're a little too young to be up there, but Orange Man shows his ID, and the bartender apologizes. They get the bartender in on the prank, and afterwards, Orange Man disses Shin's friends. Now you know what? I can see where this argument is coming from. It is dangerous for an underage girl like herself to be alone when surrounded by a bunch of losers. So with that in mind, I'll take away just a little bit of my disdain for Shin. After Orange Man goes to the bathroom, these two guys come up to Shin and completely prove Orange Man's point. Fortunately, Orange Man gets back in time and forces them to leave. Unfortunately, Orange Man drinks the orange juice that was roofied by one of the harassers. So yada yada yada, Orange Man is dead. Shin goes to see what's wrong with Orange Man, and he's clearly not joking. The taxi driver asks Shin if he should take them to the hospital or her house, and Orange Man begs to not be taken to the hospital. We cut to Maya and Rika looking for Mr. Famous Man, and they finally wonder how Shin's doing. They listen to the prank voicemail and automatically freak out, and I'm skipping this. We cut back to Shin and Orange Man, and Shin notices that Orange Man isn't drunk since she can't smell alcohol from him. Shin is wondering what it could have been that made him become like this, and starts panicking, thinking his family will sue the crap out of her. Don't worry, Shin, I have the perfect lawyer that will get you out of any- she decides to call one of his friends to tell him what the situation is, but the other side of the call is hectic. All she manages to get out is that he's going to the hospital before his phone dies. And who's at the other side of the line? It's... It's... <laughs> Shin and Orange Man arrive at the hospital, and the taxi driver asks for his money. $50? This guy is ripping... Wait, isn't this set in Korea? How much is this actually? Four cents? You're, you're complaining about four cents? How broke do you have to be to be complaining about pennies? Literal pennies! Even freaking homeless people would feel bad and donate you some money. A nurse notices the two of them and asks them if they need any help. She comes up to check on him and she's with the annoying orange! Oh man, he's gonna cure orange man with his amazing comedic performance and- UNFORGIVABLE! FIND HER! EXTERMINATE HER! EXTERMINATE! The nurse explains that he doesn't have any orange allergies and was most likely roofied. She takes off his mask and she finds out it's the guy from the other day! What? How could anyone have known? Maya and Rika are freaking out in the bar, thinking that they're gonna end up on Unsolved Mysteries, and the bartender tells them to shut up. He then tells them how they were in the wrong in this situation, and they shouldn't have left her alone. Look man, I get it. They were incredibly irresponsible for leaving their friend, who barely goes out, alone. And they shouldn't have ignored her in the case that something was happening to her. But this orb? It's not shrinking anytime soon! A and look! She's assuming the worst about Orange Man right here, even though he helped her! It's not shrinking, it's growing! After Rika calls Shin and Shin tells her she's in the hospital, she hears someone asking for Orange Man. And she encounters the nerd and other guy. For all I know, a huge rumble could go down, but I cannot afford a long video, so we're out. <laughs> Okay, so this is far from the worst webtoon I've read. Matter of fact, for now, I'm giving it a solid 7. For now. Anyways, the story is decently interesting, what with Shin getting involved with Orange Man in an ironic twist of events. Is it interesting enough to keep me reading? Uh-uh. Only the most intriguing stories can keep me engaged like that. As for the characters, well, the side characters seem alright. Orange Man is so far a pretty decent guy. Maya and Rika also seem to be alright, and yes, while they are irresponsible for leaving Shin alone, they're, they're teenagers, of course they're gonna be far from responsible. As for Shin... 
look man, I can sympathize with her, and I understand her upbringing has a way with how she acts. Plus, she too is a teenager just like her friends, so she's also bound to be immature. But with all that being said, it does not mean I have to like her. She's, for lack of a better term, insufferable. I cannot bring myself to root for her, and maybe I'm missing the point, maybe I'm not supposed to root for her like that. But man, I, I just can't like her. There's too much going against her. She probably gets better though, I am only 7 episodes in. So if you guys want me to read more, just put it in the comments. Anyways, I think that's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching this video in its entirety. If you guys like this video, then please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Also, join the Discord server to boost my ego. If you guys have any video suggestions or any other webtoons I should read, then please leave it in the comments section below. And with that, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.